Yes, this is my final look. What do you think? This is a collaboration with my good friend Tamara at Tamara Timeless Beauty. We decided months ago, let's do a Mother of the Bride. No one ever talks about Mother of the Bride. Why should Mother of the Bride or Mother of the Groom be neglected? It's a very proud day for you. You gave birth to this child. They went through school. They got engaged. They're getting married. And soon, the circle of life will begin again. And they'll have children, maybe. And it's a good day for you. And you should be able to clam it up a little bit. And I wanted to give you an idea of what I would do if I was mother of the bride or groom. I'm having a little bit of a throat thing today. Sorry, just a little froggy in my throat. So we were thinking about doing this last fall and decided not to. There was so much going on and let's do it in spring and we kind of forgot. And here we are, we're almost in summer. So it's the perfect time. And we decided how we could bring something different to you is Tamara would be doing a wedding that is outside garden during the day. And I would be doing a wedding that is nighttime and most likely indoors, although you can do nighttime outdoors for sure. But the lighting is going to be a little bit more dim and a little more forgiving, <laughs> depending. Hopefully uh, the lighting will be very nice. And so that's what we decided to do. Now, I'm, I'm big on fantasy, you guys. My fantasy life would shock you. <laughs> So I looked around for dresses, and this is the dress that I fell on. I decided I like the fact that one, it covers a good deal of my upper arms, and I love the skirt. So I have a waistline, but I have a lot of junk in the trunk, and this kind of hides the junkiness, which I really like. I like the color. I think the whole dress is elegant and easy and timeless, and yet, stylish. The only thing I don't 100% love, and I'd have to see it in person, is the belt. But that can be changed. I'm not sure why I'm not digging it. But that was the one that I landed on, and this is the look that I would wear with that. So this dress was the dress. I looked at several dresses, you guys, and if you wait till the end of the video, right before the chickens, after I do my sign-off, I will show you a couple of more dresses that I really, really like. And they're very different styles and would please very different um, aesthetics. Down below I will list Tamara's video and a link to her channel. You probably know who she is if you're following me because she has, I don't know, 75,000 followers and she's a dear friend of mine and I'm really happy to be collaborating with her. Collaborate. There are probably things that I'm forgetting to say because I did not do a script. Shame on me. But if you want to see how I got this look, keep on watching. We're going to get there right now. All right, you guys, prep. A little perfume just makes me happy. But there's some other things we want to do for prep. So this morning, I did a facial massage. I did it with my Tatcha 3-in-1 Cleansing Oil. And I've been doing it with that oil for quite some time. I find that using actual oils, just oils, for massage, it has actually more drag, which I don't really want, but it's very hard to get off, and I feel like I end up stripping my skin after I do facial massage. So the Tatcha Cleansing Oil is very gentle. I can work with it for 20 minutes, 40 minutes, and I don't feel like it's stripping my skin. So I did that first, and then I went on with the Skin Iceland. Now, I have a video on this, which I will put right here, and you will see in the B-roll that it just flattened everything out, especially on this side, because I left it on for quite some time, and it's still looking good, although it looks like I have mascara from yesterday falling down, but it's really helped my puffiness quite a bit. So leave those on for a bit longer than you think. They do a great job. And then I went on with the Hannah Cure. The Hannah Cure, if this is something that you are interested in doing for a big event, I suggest that you try it out first. It leaves me pretty red, and it leaves some people pretty red. Today I did it on the face and on my chest. I really like what I did to the chest. But I don't have any bumps or weirdness that are resulting from this, so I'm fine with the redness. I'm going to go on with makeup after all. Also, there's a little bit of learning curve. Like, I feel like I got a better effect on this side than this side. But the first time I tried that, 
and I will post that right here, I felt like I got a better result on this side. So you might want to try it a few times or buy one and see, does it have potential? Try it a few times before the events so you're not surprised or shot with anything that happens. And another thing you can do for prep is a start with some Crest White Strips. These work, you guys. I haven't used mine in a while, but I think initially you're supposed to use it for two weeks, and then you just do it maybe once a week, once a month or something like that. I haven't used it in a while, you can probably tell. I need to start using these again, but you don't have to go to the dentist to get them bleached or lightened or anything. I'm telling you, I've done the trays, which work fabulously, but, this is so much cheaper. You don't have to go to the dentist. So there's some prep. You know, I usually go on with foundation first. In this case, I'm using a eyeshadow that could be a little messy, so I want to do that first. This is the Victoria Beckham Lid Luster in the color Mink, and it is just lovely. Here's your swatch. It's a little bit taupey. There might be a little bit of a hint of greeniness to it, but I think it would work very well for many, many eye colors and skin tones. So this is what we're going to do, and it's almost the only thing we're going to do on the eyes. You can use your finger, but there's nothing like a disaster day of. I have found that these little things work fabulous. These are just foam applicators. You can buy them maybe at the drugstore, certainly at a beauty supply like Sally's, or you can just pick them out of your Chanel or Dior's. They still do these and Chantica still does them. And you get a little more mm, finessing with something like this. Lean my head back a bit, so I'm sure, hopefully, not to get any fallout. And I'm just pressing this in. I am going to be wearing false eyelashes today, little ones, which I tried for the dry run. <laughs> I did one side kind of wrong. I did learn a little bit, but one thing I found is because this color is so dark, it's kind of hard to see what you're doing, but you can't really do your lashes first and then your shadow. So I'm just going to be doing kind of a rounded look initially. We're really just sketching it out, and it, this is the kind of eye look that comes together pretty much at the last minute. And I find that using it with that applicator, you get the same sheen as you do when you do it with your finger. If your lids are uneven, like mine are, you probably don't want to close your eyes as best you can and make sure that they're the same height when the eyes are closed. What really matters is what do you see when the eyes are open. This is Danessa Myra's color fix. I don't know the color. I think it was written here and the thing came off, but I will, I will find it for you. And the color is a little bit different. It's a little bit lighter and has more gold in it. So what I'm going to do is take a bit not spreading it out. I'm going to pick it up with this very small, this is a refer. 2-3 and I'm going to pick this up and use this as a liner. I'm counting on those gold little flecks in here to actually bring light to your eyes and kind of make your eyes sparkle. It's a very very subtle effect and it might not be something you're into. But I am. Now, because I'm hooded, I'm not going to do a wing or anything like this, but even if I wasn't hooded, I don't think I would wing this color out. There. I'm going to pull you in now, and do you see how there's a little bit of gold sparkle going on right at the lash line? I will be wearing mascara. It is subtle, but I think it makes the eyes look a little bit more special. I'm changing mirrors. I'm bringing my big mirror here, and this is a 10X. No one, it should be against the law for anyone to look at their skin in something this big. But I couldn't do some lashes, you guys, and I need all the help I can get because I'm so blind. 
And of course, you can't do this with your glasses on. This is what I am using, and I will link it below. I don't even know what they're called, you guys. But I'm sure it's in here somewhere. And I did do a dry run. And again, if you've never worn little lashes before, definitely do a dry run. Practice makes perfect, and I'm just going to spread this out a little thinly. I'm not going to just blob it here because it's a little tricky how much you use. Too much, you're going to be here forever, not enough, it's not going to stay. So this one, I don't understand it. There's two rows of shorts and then a medium, and this, is this medium? Is it long? I think it's long. Believe it or not, on me, the shorts are the way to go. So I'm just going to kind of drag this through very gently. I'm going to use my finger for balance. And this is still probably too much. You know what? I'm such an unpro, I forgot. Very important, especially if your lashes don't curl up, give them a curl. Otherwise, you're going to have some straight lashes, and then you'll have the fake ones that are going up like this. Also, you guys, I found that my eyes started watering after I did this yesterday, so if I was going to make a career out of wearing lashes, I would undoubtedly find another brand to work with. Now I'm going to try to take this and fuse it really carefully with my own lashes. There we go. If you feel you have a little too much glue on, take a Q-tip, but don't use the cotton part. I'm just going to do that. Use the wood. You don't want the cotton in here. 14 years later, they're not perfect. It's not ideal. I think singles would probably be better. And every eye shape is different, and that really makes a difference. I could go in with teeny little scissors and just trim them on my eye. I wouldn't be worried about trimming my own lashes because my own lashes are so much shorter. But that's okay. We are going to go on with mascara. And as I said, we're not done with the shadow. So we're not going to really see the lashes. We're just going to see the effect. Before we go on with mascara, I want to do lining. This is from Hourglass. It is the Boyer Gel Liner, and it absolutely stays where you put it. And that's something that I'm going to want. And then I'm going to take, this is I think a MAC 217, pre-synthetic, and I'm just going to tap it into the Victoria Beckham. And now I'm working a little bit more on my shape so that when my eye is open, I'm going to see some of this shadow, but for me, it's important to have the lashes on so I can see what shape I want. And I don't want to go out any further than here, so I'll just press and push in. I'm going to go a little higher because these lashes are so long. I can't believe these are shorts. We're getting close. I feel like I have a little bit right here. Just take a Q-tip. This is the kind of shade that you can blend with something like this and you'll have less glitter and more of the color that this is in, the base color, and that is lovely. That's what I did yesterday, but I'm just trying a little bit different today. And when you do cleaning up, like this was too far down, I cleaned up with this and then just press with my finger so it's not a hard line. Remember, it is evening wedding, so there will be some forgiveness. And I'm gonna go on with my Victoria Beckham. I want to do a tubing, because tubings, unless you cry hot tears, you're not gonna have any issues, hopefully. You can do waterproof. I don't love waterproof mascara, and I'm doing the lashes as well, but the lashes are already pretty long. I'm just doing the lashes so they fuse with my real lashes, and I might be able to shape them a little bit. Let's move on to foundation. Now, some people have oily skin, and they need to really make sure their foundation is going to last. If you do, I suggest you consider using something like the Dior Face and Body. 
Mac face and body, I think they changed the formula altogether. And it's radiant now, more shiny than the original. These both were made with film formers so that it will stay on your skin. You also might want to do a primer or a setting spray for longevity. For me personally, I don't have a problem with foundation staying on my face, so I'm not going to bother. But you already saw the dress I selected in my fantasy wedding situation. I am going to need to cover my redness because that's pretty bad. And I'm going to use this on my chest because it won't rub off and stain my beautiful dress. I'm going to use the Etherealist on my face because it has more coverage than most of my foundations, but it looks beautiful on the skin. Both of these are the teeniest bit too dark for me, but the undertones work quite well. So I am going to lighten them up with the Chanel LeBlanc. This is something to have on hand when you have a foundation that's beautiful, the color is right, undertone wise, but it's a little too dark, or you found something you love in the summer, and this will help you wear it in the winter. So there we have it. I'm just gonna mix it on my hand. Just the littlest bit should be enough for me. Then I'll pick up with the Beauty Blender, make sure it's evenly coated, and deposit a couple of stamps, and start going for it. Now, if you are having a wedding at night, you probably don't want to be shiny when you're doing the photos because they'll be using a strobe or a flash and you're going to get some reflection off of that that you probably don't want to look at in 20 years or even in two days. So I would powder my face down pretty nicely before the photographs, but since I prefer a skin-like finish for the rest of the evening when I'm talking to people and having dinner and whatever, casual photos that people are doing with their phone, I'm okay with my actual real life preference. And at the end of the video, we'll talk about what I would bring with me, keep in my little bag. Now, this is also a little bit too dark for me. So I usually just go on straight with this because it's such an unusual formula but this time I'm going to have to mix it on my hand and it might start to film form if I don't move quick. So this might be a little too light. I'm not looking to absolutely get rid of my redness. I just want to even everything up because I have a v-neck dress. My by Terry Densilis this concealer is one where you wear a lot, unlike many of the others I've been wearing the last year or two. It just seems to work for older skin. And then I'm going to do Beauty Blender. Up and down. Up and down. I'm not moving it out. And this can also help me give some shape to the corner. Now, when I get to the corner of my eye, I don't want to do a beauty blender. <laughs> I want to do a brush because it's more accurate for me. Now, I'm going to take a little bit more concealer, put it on the hand, and pick it up with a beauty blender because I can still see a little redness on my cheeks, which, while it's fresh for a day look, for an evening look, I might not like that. But I just use a little bit, you guys, because concealer doesn't really look that good on mature skin when you use it on the face. Now let's go in with brows. Now I'm going to use a pen. This is from NYX, and I've seen many people use this with great effect. They actually look like brow strokes. On me, it kind of bleeds together. So I'm taking my Q-tip and I'm bringing my big mirror back and just kind of cleaning up under the eyes to make sure there's no sunscreen or foundation or anything so this can adhere. Then I'm taking a spoolie. So it's a two-hand job. I'm going to pull my brows back and just try to do it the way I see other people do it, which is just boo, boo, 
And I'm going to do different angles. And you guys, you don't have to do this. I'm just kind of going the extra thing. And this is what I usually use, also by NYX. And I like to make my arch a little bit higher to match this one. The eyes are beginning to come together. It is time to clean my hands and go on to the rest of the face. My lips need a break. So I'm going to do a little contouring, do a fiber brush. I did this recently in another video, so we'll just do this kind of fast in editing, not in real life. Then I'm going to go in with couchette. And again, I know I just did this the other day, but it's not going to be the only color. I like this because there's something very, very subtle and workable about it. I do find that at night, if I'm doing cool on my eyes, then I'm probably going to do cool on my lips, but I have to do warm on my cheeks. If I do cool on all three areas, it's a disaster. And the same thing, if I go warm on my eyes, I want to do cool on my cheeks. So this color is a little bit warm and yet very subtle. Now I'm going to do a little powder. I'm going to build up with my blushes because blush fades, but I don't want something too strong. So we're going to do three. That was the cream. Now we're going to do this Dior. This is my Chikahoto brush. And my blush brushes are always listed below. Only the second thing that fell in today's video. This color has a bit of a sheen to it, so it's acting a little bit as a highlighter. I wouldn't recommend using a highlighter for wetting unless you are very, very skilled. A sheen like this is beautiful and youthful, but most highlighters are very aggressive and it's going to look like a stripe, especially with an evening wedding where there's strobes or flashes. So this application is a little bit youthful in that I put some on my cheeks this is because this works for the shape of my face. When I don't put color here, I look dead. I'm just not one of those girls who has that, you know, model kind of face where they'll just put it right here and it looks elegant. And then for the final color, I'm doing another limited edition just because this is what I have that works. And this will kind of tone down the girliness that I have going on here, for lack of a better word, the pinkinish. So this is Broom Rossi. I don't know if it's still available, but I will link it below if it is. And what I like about this is it's that brownish kind of shade, that evening kind of look. And I'm almost going to contour. I'm going to use a very light hand and do like a half moon. So it's not on top of the pink. And it's not even really on top of the cochette because the cochette was more like here. The pink is more here, and this is more under. But it's not exactly where my contour is, which is right here. So it's really three different colors, two different formulas, and three different positions. Now let's go on to lips. Ha! We've been shooting for an hour and we're not even done. This is the number three in Victoria Beckham, and I'm going to line the entire lip. It's one way to go. Because remember, the first thing you're going to do is probably pictures, before the reception anyway. There, I put the liner all over the lip. Now, I have a couple of options for lips because again, I think for photos, I want something a little bit different than I want for dinner. For dinner, I might want to go with something like this, but for photos, a light shade like this, and it's shiny, I'm going to do two things. A lot of people disagree with this, but I'm telling you, this is 100% true. If you have thinner lips, and you put on something super shiny, and the light captures it, whether it's the strobe or the flash, all they're going to see is this line of shine, and that will make your lips seem thinner because they're just seeing that. You could do a little bit around the edge of your mouth, 
but usually these move so it's not going to stay there. And if you did it around the edge of the mouth, then the eye is perceiving that shine around here, making the lips seem bigger. If the shine is just from your highest point, it's a straight line. I also find that nude lips make your lips look smaller, if you have small lips. And I am not a fan of the dark liner and the light lip. If you are, do that. That's not my thing. So for photos, I could either just do this lip liner and call it a day, or I would go on with this, which is a very, very similar color, you guys. I'm going to show you, just doing the lower lip. Lower lip is both, upper lip is just the liner. If you don't want to be that person who's checking their makeup every three minutes during the photos, I think this is a good way to go. You have a better chance of it staying. Blot and put on a little bit more. It's creamy. I think it's comfortable. This is the cashmere formula, I think. Blot again. But this time when I blot, I'm going to Make sure I get the outside edges. Boom. It's matte. You don't have to do matte. You could do a cream rather than something glossy. And then for dinner, maybe I would want to put this over. So this is bikini. And when you put bikini over this, it kind of lightens everything up. Or you could just take off your lipstick and put the bikini, if you want that nude look, over. And of course you could go in with a darker color, like this one. But I'm liking what this is. Now, it's time to powder up the face. I'm going to use my By Terry. I don't feel super shiny today, but a little bit, and we're thinking about, hey, what's going on with the pictures? So for the wedding, I'd read this. For the pictures, I would powder and then I would leave everything alone for dinner and maybe just change my lipstick to bikini. Now, for me, I am overpowered, but I think for most people I'm not, and it's hot right now, so it'll calm down in a few minutes. While we're doing powder, I wanna show you a trick that professional makeup artists do. This is the smallest one, well, the only one I have, but you can take a small one and you put your powder in here, boom. And they work the powder into the puff like this. And then they put it in a baggie and they bring it with them for whatever it is that they're doing. That's what you can do to make sure that you will have something to powder your face for the shine, or you can take a compact if you want to, if you have one that you like. And just kind of roll Boom. So be sure to load up or get a compact, a powder compact, put it in a baggie. The other thing that I would take is both the lip products, or all three, really. I would take the liner, the lipstick, and the gloss so I can change things depending on what the light is. Am I inside dancing and dinner? Am I at the church or the synagogue or the hotel or wherever you're having the wedding at night? Probably going to be inside. Um, yeah, so I would have those options for me, and I'm always thinking about those pictures, because those pictures will be around forever. Now, I'm going to mess around with my hair a little bit, and come back. I have some jewelry ideas. If you're wearing something that is cut low, you can absolutely have a necklace on. Probably a shorter necklace is the way you want to go. But this top is sequined, so I don't want to be too, too, too much. I love the idea of pearl earrings because they're so classic. And I love the idea of doing something with the hair that kind of goes with the dress, like a Veronica Lake kind of thing, or certainly a, a side part. Now, I can't do a finger wave, but that would be so fun to do. And you could do a finger wave and still have your hair up. And you can have your hair up and still do a flower. You know, you could have a flower down here. You could have one up here. I just happen to really adore a flower look. 
This I got at a local fabric store here in Los Angeles, a really good one, and these petals, one just fell off, are made of leather. It's a little bit uh, too big, honestly. And then something around the neck. I like the way that neither of these are white. This is a soft gray and this is a creamy color and I think that works. But I also have some pearl earrings. If I were to do the earrings, I think the necklace would be a little too much. This jewelry that I'm thinking of right here, there's nothing typical and obvious about this. With this particular dress, if you want her to go more traditional, gray pearls would work lovely with that. Let me just put on those earrings. They are not for pierced ears, so it takes me a minute, and I'll show you that look. Okay, the hair is back up. The hair is more down here, as opposed to in the center, and it kind of balances out here to here. There is something very balancing about that. Some drop earrings, and nothing on the neck. That can work as well. I kind of like this because the cheekbone jaw area on me is pretty strong, where if you don't see that, I feel like you see a lot of stuff going down. <laughs> Conversely, I don't have much of a jawline, so you just have to find what makes you feel good, what you feel more comfortable in. Now I'm going to put a couple of curls in it and show you with the hair down. And this is with the hair down. Just, I hit it with a curling iron for a few seconds and I actually touched it with my hands, so I need to get an ice cube right away. But that's it, you guys. This is my idea, my interpretation for mother of the bride or groom for a nighttime wedding. It took me a while, but I did everything quite slow. And you, of course, don't have to do the lashes. Practice the look over and over again to see what will work, especially if you're not wearing sunscreen and you're used to having that. So you can have something that lasts a long time, that doesn't flash back, have a little variety, powder before pictures, and keep your puff with you, but then let it go more radiant for the rest of the day. A little bit of a darker, more matte color on your lip for photos, and then you can go on or do something lighter or shiny if you want to later on during the reception. And that's it. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I hope this was fun for you. Maybe I've given you some ideas and I hope you come back again. Until we meet again, be safe and smart and I'm wishing you good health.